9.2 goes over transformations of breaths. Um, this is something from Algebra 2 that you should have seen. Um, we're just going to be going over it again. We're going to go first through every single type of function that we'll be looking at, and then we'll get into the different types of transformations. So the first type of graph that you see here is a linear function. Those are just straight lines. So those are in the form of f of x, or y, is equal to mx plus b, or just a number. You also have absolute value functions. Those absolute value functions look like a v and come to a point. You do also want to recognize your domain and range with these different types of functions. So if you look at your linear functions, your domain are going to be all real numbers. Your range most likely will be all real numbers as well, depending on what your function looks like. For your absolute value functions, your domain and range will differ based off of your actual function. So with these, your domain most likely is going to be all real numbers. Your range will go from one point up to infinity or one point down to negative infinity, depending on which way that graph opens. The next type of function is a quadratic function. These are u's and are in the form of f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So these have that x squared on them. Those domain, domain and ranges are similar to the absolute value functions in the sense that your domain would be all real numbers. And then your range, is, if it goes up, it's going to be from one number to infinity. If it's opening down, it'll be from one number to negative infinity. The next type of function we're going to be looking at is the square root function. So f of x is equal to the square root of x. With these, your domain goes from 1 term or 1 number to positive infinity or vice versa, 1 number to negative infinity. Same with your range. It goes from 1 number up to positive infinity or 1 number down to negative infinity. The first type of transformation that we are going to look at is horizontal transformation. So this is, means that we're going left or right. You'll see that we are going left or right. That change is going to happen within parentheses or within the brackets or under the, the radical. So it gives you that translation right or left. So it's going to move to the right so many units or to the left so many units. With these, you want to think opposite. So any of your horizontal transformations that we're going to be working with, left or right, you're going to kind of think the opposite. With these, if you have something like f of x is equal to x minus 2 squared, like you do in example 1a, you want to take the opposite of that term that you see there, and that's telling you what you're going left or right with. So with this one, it's minus 2. The opposite of minus 2 is positive 2. You think of positive 2 on the number line. It's to the right of 0. So this one is going to the right 2 units. For example, B, we're given G of X is equal to the absolute value of X plus 3. For this one, this is plus 3 inside those absolute value bars with the X. So again, think the opposite of the sign in front of the 3, which would be negative 3. Negative 3 is to the left of 0 on the number line, so we're going left 3 units. The next type of transformation that we're going to be looking at is stretching and shrinking. We call this a stretch or a compression. This happens either vertically or horizontally. If it's happening vertically, it's happening outside or in front of the brackets, the x, the x squared, um, the absolute value bars, the parentheses. Again, it's in front of those. So with these transformations, if it is a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, you're going to look at that number. It's in front of the parentheses or in front of x, not inside the parentheses or the brackets or anything like that. If the number is greater than 1, then it is a vertical stretch. If the number is between 0 and 1, it's a vertical compression. Again, this is only if the number is in front of x, in front of the square root sign, in front of the absolute value bars, in front of the parentheses, in front of the x squared. 
if you have a horizontal transformation that's stretching or shrinking or stretching and compressing, it's going to be on the inside of the parentheses, the inside of the absolute value bars, the inside of the radical in front of the x. You will take the reciprocal of that number, and that will tell you whether or not you have a stretch or a compression horizontally. If the number, once you take the reciprocal, is between 0 and 1, you have a horizontal compression. If the number is greater than 1, once you take the reciprocal, then you have a horizontal stretch. So if we look at example 2, we have f of x is equal to 2 square root x. That 2 is in front of the square root of x, so we're going to leave it the way that it is. That means that we have a vertical stretch or compression. So it is vertical. That 2 is greater than 1, so it's a stretch. And we tell by the factor of it, by that number. So it's by a factor of 2. For example, B, we have g of x is equal to 1 half x squared. That 1 half is in front of x, not underneath the parentheses or inside the parentheses, underneath the radical, anything like that. So we are going to have a vertical stretch or compression. That 1 half is between 0 and 1, so it's a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. For example, C, we have h of x is equal to parentheses 3x close parentheses squared. That 3 is inside the parentheses with the x. So since it's pr inside the parentheses in front of x, take the reciprocal of that number. The reciprocal of 3 is 1 third. So we're going to have a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 third, since that 1 third is less than 1 but greater than 0. So we're looking at this turns into 1 third. So we have a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. For example, D, we have f of x is equal to the square root of three fourths x. We're going to look at that three fourths since it's in front of x. We're going to take the reciprocal of it. The reciprocal of three fourths is four thirds. That four thirds is greater than one. So we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 4 thirds.
All right, so the next part of your lesson um, goes over vertical translations. These are vertical, which means up and down. So these graphs or these lines are either moving up or moving down. When you see these types of transformations, it's going to be plus a number or minus a number after the parentheses, after the square root function, after the um, absolute value bars. So if we look at our next example. We're just stating the transformation. For A, we have f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 6. This minus 6 is after the absolute value bars. So because it's a minus 6, we're just going down 6 units. And if you look at example B, you are given g of x is equal to x squared plus 4. That plus 4 comes after the x squared. There's no parentheses, no absolute value, no radical. So you just um, are going up 4 units. The last part of your lesson goes over multiple transformations within one function that's given to you. If I were you, I would memorize what I have here. This g of x is equal to negative a square root negative bx minus h plus k. This gives you literally every single transformation for that you can be dealing with with this. So if you have a negative in front of your function, that reflects across the x-axis. If you have a number in front of that, fun that function, it's a vertical stretch or compression. Remember, if the number is greater than 1, it's a vertical stretch. If the number is between 0 and 1, it's a vertical compression. Then if you have the negative underneath the radical, inside the parentheses, inside the absolute value bars, that reflects across the y-axis. That number that's in front of the x, that's the coefficient of x, take the reciprocal of that number, and it gives you your factor. If that reciprocal is greater than 1, you have a horizontal stretch by that factor. If that reciprocal is between 0 and 1, you have a vertical compression by that factor. Then remember, if you have something that's plus a number or minus a number after that x under the radical inside the absolute value bars or inside the parentheses, you take the opposite of that number and you're going right or left. If the opposite of that number is to the right of 0 on the number line, you're going to the right that many units. If the opposite of that number is to the left of 0 on the number line, you're going to the left that many units. And then that plus a number, minus a number after your parentheses, after the radical, after the um, absolute value bars, just gives you that you're going up or down that many units. So if we look at example 5 for A, we're given g of x is equal to 3 absolute value negative x plus 4 minus 7. That 3 that's in front just tells us that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. Then we have that negative that's in front of the x inside the absolute value bar. That gives us a reflection across the y-axis. Then you have that plus 4 inside the absolute value bar. So think opposite of positive 4. That's negative 4. We're going to the left 4 units. And lastly, that negative 7 just means that we're going down 7 units. For example, B, we have h of x is equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 5 squared plus 2. This negative is in front of the, the parentheses, so we're reflecting across the x-axis. The 2 thirds is inside the parentheses, so take the reciprocal of that. That's 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is greater than 1, so that gives us a horizontal stretch. by a factor of 3 over 2. Next you have that negative 5, so we're going to the right 5 units. 
And lastly, the plus 2, so we're going up 2 units. For example, C, we have n of x is equal to negative 2 square root x minus 3. The negative in front of the 2 tells us that we reflect across your x-axis. The 2 tells us we have a vertical stretch. by a factor of 2. And the negative 3 underneath the, the radical after the x tells us that we're going to the right 3 units. For example, d, we have g of x is equal to negative 2, parentheses, x plus 3 squared plus 4. The negative is a reflection across the x-axis. The 2 tells us that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. The plus 3 tells us we're going to the left 3 units. And that plus 4 tells us we're going up 4 units. For our last example, E, we have Y is equal to 1 half absolute value X minus 4 minus 1. So that 1 half tells us that we have a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. That minus 4 tells us we're going to the right 4 units. And that negative 1 tells us we go down 1 unit.